everyone. My name is David Abazwe, and I am a Vice President Software Engineer here at Goldman Sachs. And it's an absolute privilege to be here today to moderate a, an exciting discussion on what life as a black engineer at Goldman Sachs is like. It's actually quite surreal being in the seat that I'm in right now, because I remember my first day as an intern many, many years ago, walking through the doors of Goldman Sachs in my shiny suit and tie. And funnily enough, I haven't worn a tie since my first day in office that day. But to be sat here today, you know, having the chance to moderate an exciting discussion is quite something. So I'm really looking forward to it. And what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be sharing the stories and experiences of some of our black engineers here at the firm. We have a huge population of black engineers, so we're excited to highlight some of their stories and experiences here today. It's really important for us as a firm to do this because it allows us to, first of all, showcase the black excellence we have here at the firm at Goldman Sachs. And second of all, we also want to highlight that one, Yes, it is very important to focus on recruiting black talent and getting black talent in through the door. It's almost just as important and crucial to focus on developing that black talent. The black talent that sits within the firm, developing them into leadership positions, developing their technical skills and developing their soft skills as well. And that also leads me to talk about the Black Engineers Network, which is an affinity network within the firm that's run by the firm and its employees and it's all about the things I've mentioned. It's all about recruiting, all about career development, and it's all about expanding the network of those within the firm, the black population and their allies across the firm. So I am really looking forward to this discussion. I've got three panelists here with me today. So for me, Xavier and Pamela. And you know, as you all introduce yourselves, at the end of the introduction, I would like you to answer one question. And that is from a lifestyle and a holiday perspective, Beaches or mountains? So, Tofumi, do you want to start? Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Tofumi. I'm a software engineer in the private wealth management division, trading and booking team specifically. I'm an analyst. So I've been at the firm about two years, like 18 months now. Um, but I did an internship prior to that, two internships actually, um, from Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria. And I also moved here for work in 2020. Nice. Beaches? Or mountains? Beaches, definitely beaches. I love relaxation. I definitely love the sound of water. You would most times find me on the beach reading a book and just listening to that sound. That's me. Nice. Okay, great. Xavier? Uh, so my name is Xavier Owens. I'm a vice president uh, entering my 10th year at the firm. Um, I work in the global investment research division where I run a team of DevOps engineers. Um, I grew up in Southern California. Um, but despite that, my answer is going to be mountains. Um, part of my career, I worked in the Salt Lake office and I picked up snowboarding while I was there. And I really like the serenity and the calmness uh, of, a, of a mountainscape. And the sand in between my toes is a, is a big turnoff for me. So <laughs> I'm a big, I got to pick mountains. Nice. I'd rather have sand between my toes than snow between my toes. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I'm um, Pamela Vithlingham. Everyone calls me Pam. Um, so my background is, uh, so my ancestors are from South India, um, and they went to Mauritius in uh, sort of the 18th century. Um, and then my parents came to England um, because Mauritius was part of the Commonwealth. My parents came over in the 60s, um, so there's a lot of similarities with the Windrush generation. Um, and I was born and brought up in North London, so I'm a proper Londoner, um, and still live here now, so obviously love it. Um, beaches or mountains, uh, it's got to be beaches. Um, so I love the openness of the sea, the, big, the bigness of the sea, if you like. It, I feel much more creative in that space. I'm a scuba diver and an open water swimmer. Um, so whatever chance I get, I'll be in the sea. Nice, fantastic. Xavier, I've got to say you're outnumbered here because yeah, I'm also I a beach man. Be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned that the sand in between your toes is a turn off. I must say it's <laughs> quite the opposite for me. Yeah. It's, the, it's the meaning of I am on holiday. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the introduction. So let's get right into it. Pamela, you've got a vast amount of, of experience as we spoke. Um, about briefly just before this conversation, 27 years in the financial industry. Could you tell us a bit more about your story and what brought you to the role you're in today? Sure. Yeah, so when I was doing A-levels, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do for a career. Um, I couldn't go straight to university. I needed to be earning some money first. 
And my mum had always said, like, you know, why don't you go into banking? It's a secure job and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, I tried a high street branch for a couple of years um, and then did operations at a, a Japanese bank. But I wanted to kind of take it further and sort of challenge my brain a bit. Um, so I went to university, did an economics degree. Um, and while I was doing that, I um, was temping at banks. Um, and I was temping at one place where they spotted that I had um, good analytical skills um, because I kept challenging the way that, um, that things were being done and sort of suggesting other ways of doing things. Um, so they uh, created that, um, that as a role because they were looking to roll out new technology um, and wanted to know how to use it. So essentially I got a job um, figuring out what people did and how we could automate things and I've kind of stayed doing that ever since. Nice, fantastic, very exciting. It's, it's nice to see what curiosity can lead to, um, can always lead to, to the role you're in today. Thank you, Xavier. Yeah. So you're from the United States, as we can evidently tell by the accent. Yep, that's right. But I do love the accent, <laughs> you know, but we're here in London today. Yeah. What's brought you to London? Like, and what is your story? Sure, so um, like I said, I grew up in Southern California. Uh, I went to school at University of California, Riverside. Um, during my third year, I was looking for an internship and I was kind of throwing out as many applications as I could until something stuck. Uh, something stuck, and that was Goldman Sachs. Um, I can remember thinking at the time, I, I didn't know what Goldman Sachs was, right? You know, it's not a huge banking industry on the West Coast, so I was a little bit uncertain as I went to Google it, and I was on the Wikipedia page for Goldman Sachs. I was like, oh, this is, this is a big deal, isn't it? This is a pretty <laughs> big bank. Um, so I got the internship offer in the Salt Lake City office, um, did that internship, got a full-time offer. Uh, after I accepted the full-time offer, after a few years, I moved to New York, stayed in New York for about five years or so, and then 2020 happened, right? Um, there was a, some political upheaval, and of course, COVID happened, uh, uh, especially around New York, and it felt like a bit of a, a page turn for me, right? I kind of had always wanted to live abroad, and... So I took mobility and uh, asked very nicely for my team to move into the London office. Um, and they said yes. And here I am a few years later. Fantastic. Throughout my time at Goldman, so I mean, I've been at the firm for six years or seven, including my internship. I've met a lot of people who have taken mobility. Yeah. Uh, mobility into different teams in the same location, but also mobility into the same or different teams across different regions. I'm keen to know, did you find the mobility process easy or was it a difficult thing to get through? No, I, I found it very smooth. Um, yeah, you know, I've always said I work for Goldman Sachs and I'm to make them work for me, right? <laughs> and I found that, you know, mobility is, is definitely an encouraged practice here. And I think, you know, when you show merit and you show the, the, the real competency uh, in, in a firm like this, they absolutely accommodate and, and make things, you know, make things move and make things happen to make sure you're as happy as can be. Fantastic. That's good to hear. Very good to hear. Tough for me. So, schooled in Nigeria, and you're here today. Really curious to know, what is your story, and how did you get into the role you're in today? Yeah, so I was in my third year of uni, um, trying to figure out what do I want to do with my life. Um, I was studying computer science, and I remember thinking, do I really want to do this? Like, am I sure? And then we had this alumni who had just interned at Goldman um, that year. And she was telling us about the internship, how great an opportunity it was. She had gotten a full-time offer back. And I was just like sort of inspired, like, oh my God, this is a global <laughs> opportunity. And But I was like, I don't know what Goldman Sachs is. Like, what is that? Like, why do they need engineers? Most importantly, it's a bank, it's an investment bank. And then I went back into this rabbit hole of just Googling everything. And then I was like, okay, even if I now know that this is Goldman Sachs, are they looking for someone like me? That was another question I had. And I remember seeing like this quote that just said, um, every expert was once a beginner and every day is an opportunity for you to learn. And I was like, okay, I might as well just try this out and actually learn at this company. Um, and then I applied that year. I didn't get in, felt bad, but reapplied again the next year and then got in for a spring internship which converted to a summer internship, which converted to a full-time um, offer. And I mean, we're here. 
Nice. So you've gone through the whole sort of life cycle, I'd say, of a, of an, of a government employee. You've, gone, exactly. you've done the spring internship, the summer internship, and here you're on the full-time role. Yeah. And um, of course, again, we also spoke briefly before this conversation, and you're in the private wealth management division. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit more about your actual role and what your day-to-day -day looks like? Yeah. Um, so I'm currently in the trading and booking team and also I have also taken mobility recently. So I've been in this team about two months now um, and essentially what we do is use technology to enhance the trades that we do for clients. So in private wealth, we manage um, clients who are high net worth individuals and essentially they would have like trades that they would want us to do. So my team essentially builds out the tools and the processes and the workflows that they need for that. Um, my day-to-day -day varies really, but I would say it's mostly around maybe in the mornings, catching up with the Indian team, what has happened over the day, dealing with production issues, reaching out to the business, um, finding out what issues they're facing, support issues, or maybe they have new requests that they want. I think um, a lot of these roles have helped me connect with people. So there's this, there's this, thing where they think engineers just sit down and code and you're just there 24 seven. No, absolutely not. You're actually interacting with users, speaking to them, communicating with your team, um, essentially working together to then build out this technology tools. And I think that's what this role helps me balance. It's a balance of um, product skills, reaching out to users, actually seeing what are the issues they're facing, how can we make their lives better? Yeah. And then building that out with code. Fantastic, nice. I can also relate to um, a point you've made, which is that at Goldman Sachs as an engineer, it's not just sitting in a, in a room and just coding your life away. You, it's important to do both. You need to, of course, have the technical skills, but the soft skills are really important. Being able to speak to your stakeholders, work out your requirements, and just see a partnership between yourself and your clients and the business grow. It's, um, it's something that's really emphasized here at the firm, and, and I can see the value in that. Pamela, over the years, Mm -hmm. I can imagine that tech has changed a lot. Not just imagine, but tech has changed a lot. So I'm keen to know what's kept you interested in, in what you're doing today? Okay, so I head up the process design um, for automation team within Workflow um, in core engineering. Um, and to just give you a flavour of why I'm so interested in it, um, I just wanted to explain what process automation is. Um, so just to give an example, say you wanted to open a bank account. Um, you have to go to your bank on on the high street, or go to a bank on the high street. Um, they give you a bunch of forms to fill in. Then you realise that you need loads of ID, so you've got to go home and get that. You go back tomorrow, and it's somebody else. Um, and you give them your ID, and you go back again a couple of weeks later because you've not heard anything, and you just back and forward. Um, and that's that's quite painful. And there's no guarantees that these forms are going to go to the right people. Um, so my job is to automate that and to look at, well, what are the pain points in this process and what could a computer do to, um, to, to take that away? Um, and so essentially, you know, can we do it online? Can a form be, um, be completed online? Can people upload their documentation that way? Um, can we even give them some notifications back to say, uh, you know, you're in the queue or you're, you're, you're in this part of the process or, or whatever? So... Um, I find that endlessly um, interesting. Um, and it's also like rewarding when your clients give you feedback. So um, one of my best memories uh, was being in Broadgate Circle, at Liverpool Street, and one of my clients um, seeing me, spotting me across the other side of Broadgate Circle, and literally running round the circle in his suit to give me a hug because um, we'd just gone live with a system that um, was changing, uh, taking so much of the pain away from what his team had to do, um, reducing their hours and, you know, the fact that they were working weekends and things. Um, so, I mean, that's the sort of thing that, that keeps me um, motivated, really. Nice, brilliant. And, I mean, I'd also be motivated if I had someone run around board gate <laughs> circle looking for me. Brilliant. Xavier, so you're in the global investment research space. That's right. And as we know... Over the past few years, from a global perspective, we've had many different events that have had a significant impact on markets, businesses, and just economies in general. But I'm keen to know, as an engineer, what impact does engineering have in the research space? Sure. So I'd say our biggest focus is availability, right? We want our research to be available to clients around the world all the time. 
And it's more than just a reputational impact, right? There's also regulatory restrictions around this as well, right? We need to make sure that people in India get the research at the same time as people in Canada or Mexico, right? Um, so this is especially true during like, like you said, like global events happening. Think about like the invasion of Ukraine or think about COVID. Um, when these big economic events happen, people turn to Goldman Sachs and say, what do these thought leaders think about what's going on in the economy and the market? So a lot of what we focus on is ensuring that our site um, our, our portal where we distribute this research is available around the world as all the time. Um, the other side of that is true as well. When our analysts went to create research, we create and maintain the authoring tool with which they create that research. So it's a 24 seven business, right? We have people wanting to create and consume research around the world all the time. And we need to make sure that the systems are available and elastic enough to scale um, for that demand. Um, not only that, we're also dabbling a little bit in like machine learning, uh, which is a little bit exciting. Um, we have looking at features like uh, recommendations where you know you follow one uh, one analyst or one author and you like a lot of their research. We see your history and say, oh, maybe you like some of this research as well. Um, so that's a little more on the innovative side. Nice. I think that's uh, really important to highlight is that um, you know there are places. When you're, when you're, say, studying engineering, you're not really aware of all these places that we use right. technology. Um, so like, if you think of the word research, you'd never th think that there's this whole yeah. um, engineering um, effort behind it to make, that, and to make that research available to everyone. It's true, yeah, and it's always exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's worth saying that every business, when I say business, I'm referring to you know, division, to be fair, whether it's revenue generating or not, has an engineering presence, has an engineering background. Um, engineering is really driving a lot of things at the firm, and that's really good to see. And I guess on that note, let's talk about the Black Engineers Network. Yeah. So as I briefly mentioned at the beginning, the Black Engineers Network is an affinity network within the firm that's you know, um, organized by the firm and its employees to support its black population. So they're focused on recruiting, so increasing, in, increasing the diversity recruiting efforts for black people. They're also focused on career development, that is developing its black population and their allies into leadership positions. Again, like I mentioned, from a technical perspective and a soft skill perspective, but also thirdly, which I find very important and has been of huge benefit to me, is the, the social and the networking side of things. It's connecting you with different people across the firm that you may have never met for your actual day-to-day -day role. So for me personal, personally, it's a very, very important network and I'm happy to be a member of that network. Xavier, you moved from the States over to London. Um, of course, that was through your role. But I'm keen to know, has the Black Engineers had, or the Black Engineers Network, had any impact on your career at all? Sure, absolutely. Um, like I said, when I first joined, I joined the Salt Lake City office. It's hundreds of miles from home for me. Didn't really uh, nobody, know anyone, friends or family. Um, and so one of the first networks that caught my eye was the Black Engineers Network, right? Um, as you may or may not know, there's not a huge population of black people in, in Salt Lake <laughs> City. Um, uh, and so I was keen to, you know, meet some, meet some like-minded people. And that was a real, a real like shoe in for me at the beginning of my career to like help create and expand my not only professional network, but personal network as well, right? We do social things outside of, outside of work and things like that. And even when I moved to New York, uh, those networks kind of held, right? I joined the Black Engineering Network in, in New York. This guy knew that guy, knew them, knew them, right? And so it kind of really helped me hit the ground running when I moved to New York. Nice, fantastic. Pamela? Well, for me, um, on a personal level, I find the, the Black Engineers Network to be a great, just a really warm, supportive family, if you like. Um, and a place to belong. And um, it's enabled me to do so many things. So um, mentoring young people, for example, uh, I love doing that. And it gives me a real connection with um, how you know, young people are feeling, but also gives me the opportunity to learn about the various different backgrounds and journeys that people um, are from or on. And you can, everybody's got their own story. Like you could be, 
two people from the same family or the same country, the same um, parents even, and um, and still be very different people. And um, and that's one of the things that I love about um, about diversity. We're also doing some things in partnership with other groups. So um, there's Code First Girls and there's um, Neo and a few other um, partnerships as well, um, where we're helping um, young people that want to perhaps didn't choose um, engineering as, as a career initially or didn't do an engineering degree, but want to make the switch um, and are willing to do like a boot camp or um, or something to, um, to to sort of get the base engineering skills to um, uh, to pursue that as a career. And, and that as well is, um, is very rewarding. Nice, fantastic. Um, it's good you mentioned that actually partnerships because me personally as well, I was a mentor as part of the Black Coda Bootcamp. So mentoring someone who was, you know, I guess going through these sort of lessons and trying to learn more about Goldman Sachs. And I've done loads of work outside of my day job with various schools, just simply through the opportunities that Black Engineers Network has given me. So that's good to, um, to hear that from you about the partnerships. One more thing that I wanted to say is um, how much I valued the Black Engineers Network and GS um, as a whole, actually, during the George Floyd um, horrors. I mean, uh, it was a difficult time. We were in COVID as well. And, um, you know, it impacted us all um, in some way. And the firm reached out to everybody, you know, straight away and um, and did a great job at, at looking after us. But it was also the affinity networks that were able to really get close to people on the ground and um, and feedback up to leadership so that, you know, they knew what areas to kind of focus on and um, where we needed support. Yeah, thanks for touching up on that. That was the word I think I'd use for that period to describe the feeling at the firm is unity. I feel like that was, you know, one of the, it was, it was an, it was an incredible, incredible time just seeing everybody come together from the leadership top down to empathize with, with the black community on that, um, you know, and that tragic, tragic incident. And yeah, that, that, that was, that was quite a time. Tough for me, keen to know in your career so far, what role or impact has the black engineers had on that? Um, definitely. So I interned during COVID and that was like my first opportunity to get to know about Goldman Sachs. And I remember having the first panel session and there were about two black engineers on the, on the call. And I was like, okay, I'm going to reach out to them. And I reached out to them. And I think I spoke to over 20 people, diverse people across the firm during that period, just based on the recommendation from those two people during my internship. It's a two week internship. You have to make an impact very fast. And the help of those two people literally made the internship what it was. And I remember that was my first view into Goldman through the Black Engineers Network. And then I came back during my internship absolute help, the socials, everything. But I'll say the greatest impact has been being back here full time, where one, I've been able to build a network. I'm moving from a different country, no family um, here. I've had to build my network professionally and also personally. And I'd say that most of the people that I have met have become friends even outside of work. And I've been able to even ask them questions like, where do I get food from? <laughs> like, where do I braid my hair? Yeah. Or just different things like that. And being able to see people who have maybe gone through what I am currently going through yeah. um, and provide honest advice has been helpful. So on that bit, definitely grateful for the Black Engineers Network. Secondly, and also most importantly, is being able to pay it forward, having like life affirming work, feeling like the work that I do isn't just to make money, but actually contributes to the life of somebody else. Um, and I think through this network, so I currently work within the communications pillar, where we essentially work on the branding and the things that go out about the network. And I get to see the tons of initiatives that go on within the different pillars. Being able to sort of feed that back and see the impact that it has on one person has made me feel like, you know what, you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for the network for that. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And on that note, the conversation is done. Thank you very much to me, Xavier and Pamela for taking part in the exciting discussion today. And to those watching and listening, we really hope that you've enjoyed today's conversation. Again, it was really important for us to highlight the different stories and experiences a black engineer at Goldman Sachs can have. Everyone's story is unique. Everyone's story is different. 
but everyone's story is what makes you you and is your strength. So it's important to use your story in everything you do. As also mentioned throughout the organization, the Black Engineers Network has played a huge impact on what we're doing. And over the, over the past few years, the Black Engineers Network has seen a lot of successes. It's funny because I, I mentioned this story quite frequently, which is that I remember walking into the firm for the first time as an intern in my shiny suit and tie, and the first Black um, Engineers Network event we had was great. A room full of black professionals in a professional environment, it was insane. But having the same event today, we're filling up four, five, six, seven plus rooms. So it's incredible to see that growth over time. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, and I just wanted to add to that actually. I, th I think like for me, 27 years ago, uh, you know, I was, it, things have changed so much since then. Um, you know, I was definitely the only black person in the, in the high street um, branch when, when, when I was in that role. And now I'm kind of looking around on engineering floors or, you know, anywhere in the organization, in fact, and we've got such great representation um, of, of black people um, across the firm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, really good to see. And I guess on that note, thank you very much for listening once again. And please come and connect with us in any way possible. Cheers. Mm -hmm.